Hello everyone! In this video we will create a simple escape puzzle game where you have to open a door picking up colors. You select a color from the palette, you paint a glass in the door, door opens when glass colors are arranged in proper order. You win! Let's start from the scratch as usual and complete our game step by step. First I add a background and position it right at the middle. Please note that order and layer option for this game object equals to zero so it will be rendered behind other game objects, which will have higher value here. Next game object is the door. It appears behind the background. To fix it, I set its order and layer to 1. Ok, our door has 7 spots for glasses. I take glass sprite and drag and drop it into the scene. Set order and layer to 2 to bring it in front of the door. Place it right about here. Now I duplicate glass game object 6 times, pressing Ctrl plus D keys and place these new game objects to their slots. Here we go. Now let's take a look at our hint. It is a carpet, which looks like a door. It even has a handle here. According to this hint, we see that each glass should have a particular color. With that in mind, let's rename our glass game objects to make it obvious for us who is who. So this game object will be green glass, this game object will be indigo, this one will be red, this one will be blue, this glass will be orange, this one will be violet and this glass will be yellow. Ok, now to keep our hierarchy clean, let's select all of the glasses and make them to be children of our door game object. Like that. These glasses will be painted with finger touch or with mouse click. To make them to detect those clicks and touches, we need to add a collider to them. Make sure all of them are selected and add a box collider to the component. It's better to set it as a trigger. I forgot to do so. It will work anyway, but if you aren't going to use some physics, then you should set collider as a trigger in such cases. Ok. Next game object is a palette. Here it is. Set order and layer to 3. I scale it up a bit, holding shift key to scale it proportionally. Position it at the middle by X axis. Next game object is a palette color. Set order and layer to 4, so it appears above the palette. Duplicate this game object 6 times and position them like so. They are too big, so I scale them down and reposition them one more time. Ok. Looks like all of them have the same color. Let's fix it and rename them also. This color will be red. Rename it as red and select a color for it. Next one will be orange, rename it as orange and set a proper color for it. Same for yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet game objects. Beautiful. Let's keep our hierarchy clean and make our palette colors to be children of our palette. Nice. Colors will be touchable and clickable as well, so to make this function work, we need to add a colliders. Make sure all of the colors are selected and add a collider to them. Let it be circle collider this time. It should be set as a trigger as well. Next game object is selection. It is a simple gradient. This game object will highlight a color which is currently picked. It will appear above the color. So to make it happen, let's set its order and layer to 5. Scale it up a bit. No color is picked initially, so let's put selection game object about here away from the camera so it's kind of invisible at the start. The position of this game object will be controlled by another game object which we create at the moment. Next game object in our scene is victory sign. Here it is. It will appear when we win the game. Set order and layer to 6 so it appears in front of everything in our scene. Scale it down and position it about here. The last but the most important game object in our project is game control game object. Create new empty, rename it as game control and reset its position so it appears right at the center of our scene. It's not quite necessary, but let's try to keep everything clean. Ok, we are done with game objects for now. Now it's time to examine the scripts which will help us to control our game. The first one is palette color script. Here it is. First of all, we declare an event of action type named color picked. This event takes place when we touch a particular color. When it happens, this color sends some information to the scripts 
which must be subscribed to this event to be able to catch this information and respond to this event. This information contains a color value and the position of this color game object. Color value is stored in color variable and color position is stored in color position variable. We will see how exactly it works a bit later. In start method we get a color of particular color game object. For example, if this script is attached to red color game object, then color will be red and so on. Same with position. Color position variable takes a position of particular color game object. Next block of code is switch statement where we check name of this game object and depending on that we assign a color of this game object to game control proper colors array. So if this game object is red then this color becomes first element of that array. If this color is orange then it becomes second element and so on. Thus we create a set of colors which will be used to paint door glasses and to compare palette colors with glasses colors when we check if door should be opened. On mouse down method is invoked when we touch this game object with finger or when it's clicked. In this case color picked event occurs and information about color and its position is sent to the air. Objects which are subscribed to this event is ready to respond. In fact game control script will be subscribed to this event. We will see it in a moment. That's the script. This script should be added to palette colors. Select palette colors game objects and add this script to them. Here we go. Next script to examine is glass script. Here we also declare an event of action type named glass color is set. This event takes place when a particular glass is painted in some color. Each time it happens, game control script which will be subscribed to this event, will check if our puzzle is completed. We will see it in a moment, I promise. Also, here we have renderer variable and color to apply variable, which will help us to paint a glass in picked color. In start method, we get control over renderer component. Next code goes in on mouse down method, which is invoked, as we remember, when game object is touched or clicked. So, when it happens, then we set a value to color to apply variable, which equals to game control finger color variable value. Finger color variable takes a value of touched color when palette color is touched. So when color to apply is defined, then glass is painted in this color. Then we go through glasses names. Keep in mind that all of this happen when we touch a particular glass game object. So if this game object is red glass, and if color to apply equals to first element of proper colors array, which is red as we remember, then it appears, then we paint red glass in red color. In this case, we set red is red boolean variable to true. So it really is, red glass is red now. And if color to apply isn't red, then red is red is false. We painted red glass in some other color, not red. Same for other colors here. If we painted orange glass in orange color, then orange is orange is true, otherwise it's false, and so on. In the end, glass color is set event takes place, telling game control that it is time to check the results. That's the script. Select all of the glasses and add glass script to them. Here we go. Game control script at last. So here we will control some of game objects, such as selection to set its position, door to open it, and victory to turn it off at the beginning and turn it on when we win. Serialize field attribute allows us to assign these game objects in the inspector. Also we need to control doors animator component to run doors animation. And here are finger color variable and proper colors array. Also here is a set of boolean variables which help us to check results and define if door can be opened. In awake method we assign proper colors array so it will contain 7 colors. In start method we subscribe to those events. As we remember, it is color picked event of palette color script and glass color is set event of glass script. So when color picked event occurs, then set finger color method of game control script will be invoked. When glass color is set event occurs, then check results method will be invoked. Simple. Also here we turn off victory sign, get control over doors animator component and set finger color to be white initially. So, if we touch a glass with white finger, then glass will not change its color. Ok. What happens when color picked event occurs and set finger color method is invoked? This method takes values from color picked event, 
such as color and color position. So, finger color takes a color of picked color and selection game object is moved to position of picked color game object, so picked color is highlighted now. Ok, now let's see what happens when glass color is set event occurs. It occurs as we remember when glass game object is touched or clicked. Glass is painted in some color and it's time to check if door should be opened. So in this case check result method is invoked. Glass color is set event doesn't pass any additional information like color picked event does. Glass color is set event just tells us that something happens so we do the checking. It's simple. If all of the boolean variables are true, red is red, yellow is yellow and so on, then it means that we found the correct combination of the colors and door can be opened now. In this case, we run door animation and turn victory sign on. We win. There is one important thing about events. If some object is subscribed to some public event, then it must be unsubscribed from it when this event is no longer needed. Otherwise, we will get an error if scene is reloaded for example. So always remember to unsubscribe. One of the ways is to do it in onDestroy method. Ok. Script is done. Drag and drop it into game control game object. Select game control and drag and drop corresponding game objects into their slots of game control script component. Selection goes to selection, door goes to door and victory goes to victory. Now, I almost forgot about door animation. Here you may be noticed that I have door animation elements already created. Let me delete them and now we create them again together. So select door game object and go to animation window. Hit create new animation button. First one will be door idle animation which will be played by default. This will be just an empty one. Nothing happens here. Let's create another one. Create new clip and let's name it as door disappears. Now let's set up this animation. Hit record button. Here is a timeline of our animation. Put marker about here to one third of a second. Make sure the door is selected and let's scale our door up a bit so our door will be bigger at this frame. Now put marker at the end of the second and scale our door down completely. Here is what we have now. Simple and nice animation of disappearing door. Turn off recording and let's take a look at animator window. Here are our animations. Door idle is orange, which means that it will be played by default. And here is door disappears animation, which will be played when results are checked and all of the colors are correct. Whoops. Here is a possible issue found. I'm going to play door animation here. But I don't have such animation in my project. I have door disappears animation. So it will not work this way. Names should match. So I have to rename something. I can rename an animation here in inspector, but I think it's better to rename it in the script. Like that. Now everything should be fine. Let's see. Hit play button. We can pick up a color, which becomes highlighted as we select it and paint door glass with selected color. This part is working fine. Let's paint door glasses in correct colors. This one is green, this one is indigo, this one is red, this one is blue, this one is green, this one is violet and this one is yellow. It works. Animation is looped, but I want it to be played only once. Let's fix it. Select door disappears animation here and then check loop time option. Should work well now. Let's see. Yes, we win. Also, we can create an APK file and test it on Android device. This is how it works on mine. Hope this tutorial was useful for you. Thank you for watching. See you next time.